Hello citizens, welcome to another episode of an avionics technician's guide. My professional experience between the MV-22 Osprey, both the 737 MAX and NG, and now the KC-46 Pegasus has made me enjoy analyzing ships within the verse. For returning viewers and subscribers, please go to the timestamp below to get started. However, if this is your first time watching my content, then welcome. I am Sir 6. I have been watching this game since the beginning and backing since 2014. And now, I create content that is more than just stating those simple facts. My content is intended to help people like you figure out what role you would like to play in the verse and if the ship in question really fits the niche that you desire. I analyze everything and put things into perspective, all in all to make you think. Feedback is always appreciated, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this series, tell me what ship you would like to see next, and check out other videos within this series or within my channel. Now, without further chatter, let us analyze the ship in full detail, the Origin 325A. Today, we'll start off with a pre-flight walkaround, examining the weapons package and exterior of the ship, an interior walkaround showing current features the ship offers, reviewing the flight deck, analyzing flight performance, the new loadout options, tactics and loadouts, and wrapping up the video with my final thoughts on the ship. Let's begin. The 325A is the dedicated fighter of the 300 variants. Sleek, agile, and deadly, combined with the weapons and the bespoke missile rack. Sacrificing minor cargo space, but still leaving you with a solid 4 SCU, for a bit of versatility for mission running or looting your victims in the future. Let's get a closer look and discuss the ship as we start our pre-flight walk around. I'll see you on the ground. Starting off our walk around, since I chose the LC package, I have a size 4 Omni Sky on the front of my ship. Under the ship, we have the nose and main landing gear, complete with the struts, weight on wheel switches, and other accessories along the landing gear doors. Along either wings, we have the missile racks and the second gun hardpoint. This package comes standard with two size 2 missiles under each wing and a fixed size 3 Omni Sky. However, these also can be shot off with ease, so keep this in mind. Under the ship, we have the cargo bay that holds four SCU. And somewhere along the belly, we have the bespoke missile rack that holds four size 3 missiles. On the top of the ship, we have two vortex generators just in front of the engine intake. And further back, we have the unique wing-like structure that includes horizontal and vertical stabilizers, all incorporated into one sleek design. And at the back, we have the engines. Now, with our walk around complete, let's take a look at the inside of the ship. Once inside the ship, you have the sink and mini fridge that comes standard, and the three add-ons you can have, that is the cooker, a music box, and a coffee maker. You also have the standard gun rack and your closet. Moving further along, you have your bed and your TV screen that is a functioning MFD. The add-ons include a clock and a sliding image next to the bed that is also customizable. Above, you also have the sky shield that comes standard with all 300 variants. The 325A also has a bathroom. Overall, I chose the yellow trim to complement my YouTube channel theme. Now, once at the flight deck, you have the unlock, lock, open, close exterior switches. Next to that, you have two MFDs. There is supposed to be a radar screen in the middle, a injection seat at your crotch, and two more MFDs to the right. Keep moving right, you have the cycle, power, and go flight ready button, and to the right of this, you have the spool quantum drive and engine switches. The 325A has a great view in the flight deck. Now, with our flight deck analysis complete, let's take her for a spin. I'll see you in the air. The 325A is very nimble. The top speed did get cut to 1235 meters a second. However, the ship has excellent acceleration along with a substantial yaw, pitch, and roll rating. The ship is fun in atmosphere, and I see no issues here. However, because it is a smaller ship means you take an overall hit on range. But, the 300 series are said to have hydrogen fuel regeneration capabilities in the future due to a refinery within the ship, making this a decent choice over a standard carrier-based fighter. 
Now let's take a look at the weapon package options at the website. The first and default one is the classic package. This comes with grade C components, all size 1. This also comes with a size 4 laser cannon for the nose and two size 3 shredders along the wings and 8 missiles total, two size 2 on each wing and four size 3 internal to the ship. The next package is the CC package that is $18. This comes with a military grade B power plant and shield generators and coolers but a grade C quantum drive. This package comes with a distortion cannon for the nose being size 4 and two size 3 dominant scatter guns for close range. The next package you can choose, still only $18, is the XC package. This comes with a military grade B power plant, coolers and shield generators, but has a grade C class quantum drive. This loadout specializes in ballistic penetration due to the fact it comes with a size 4 Gatling cannon and two size 3 Gatling guns as well. The only thing I see here that does not make sense is the fact it says you have 10 missiles. Each wing is said to have two size 2 missiles and the internal is still 4 size 3. This is again 8 missiles total. This is probably an error unless you have 2 extra missiles laying around somewhere. The next package you can choose for the 325A for $22 is the CL package. This package comes with all grade B components mixed between military and competition. And this is probably the best bang for your buck in terms of performance and future modularity due to the grade B's having a possible subcomponent slot. But remember this. Competition class components will wear out faster compared to military class components. Even though you cannot overclock your coolers, you still have the possibility of degrading or even losing your coolers and your quantum drive as well if you are not careful. If you do not want to worry about the higher wear rating, then you could just go out and swap the competition class for military class components. And finally, for 29 doll hairs, you can have the LC package like me. The power plant and coolers are Grey B military class. Everything else being your shield generators and quantum drive are grade C. And the ship comes with three Omni Skies. Again, one size 4 and two size 3s. And the ship has eight missiles. Two size 2 on each wing for a total of four on the wings. And four size 3 in the bespoke missile rack. Okay, so real quickly looking at this all together, with ship component persistence being in right now, you honestly do not have to buy any of these packages. Most of these, or if not all of these components and weapons are able to be purchased within the game right now. To me personally, what this offers now is a source of convenience for players who do not have that much time on their hands to go grind in general or after every restart and fine tune their ship. And in the future, when you claim your ship, it will add to the total insurance deductible when purchasing a manufacturer upgrade, increasing the total value of the ship. Anyways, to learn more about ship components, check out my video on how components work. Now, let's discuss some tactics and loadouts. My banana boat's personal loadout for fighting another fighter includes the default loadout being the three Omni Skies and swapping out the wing missile racks for two size 1 quad racks, giving me four size 1 missiles under each wing. With the four size 3 default missiles still internal, this gives me a total of 12 missiles. Just like I have said before, this allows me to bleed off the shields of a light fighter, and since I have cannons, I can stay a bit further away. Another option is to leave the default missile racks on and put two rattlers on each wing for bounty hunting purposes. Just like I have said in my freelancer miss video, theoretically, with each rattler carrying 7 warheads, you would then have a grand total of 32 missiles. For a bigger ship, I will keep the standard missile loadout. Another option is to put the MSD-313 rack on, which gives you one size 3 missile on each wing. This gives you a grand total of 6 missiles, all size 3. To learn more about customizing your ship, check out my tutorial on ship hardpoints at the end of this video. Just remember, all I'm trying to do is give you a recommendation. So if you find or buy a loadout and or strategy that fits you, then please use it. Because again, at the end of the day, it is your choice. Now, as for my own thoughts on the ship, with the analysis we just went through, I'd honestly just buy this ship in-game as a new player. I wouldn't spend over $100 to customize the ship. But if you want to start off with this, then you can still carry a decent amount of cargo being 4 SCU. Still not as good as the Titan or the regular 300i, 
though overall you have increased agility and firepower. And of course you also have the option to change the different colors on your ship. The Titan has the Renegade variant and that's it. Once upgraded, you can do higher tier mission bounties that involve larger ships. It just depends on the route you want to take in terms of acquiring the components and weapons, either in-game or on the website. Once again, when ship rentals and more ships are up for grabs, which seems to be in the near future in a 3.6.x patch, then you can definitely work your way towards this ship if you do not have it in your fleet already. But of course, it is your journey overall, so use the ship as you please. If you enjoy the new customizer, then use it before some of the selections are removed until another special event arises. As always, I thank you for spending your time with me. If you enjoyed this video and got something out of it, then I would ask you to consider liking it and sharing it with a fellow friend, backer, or org mate so they can make a decision on their own role-playing style. Also, tell me your thoughts on the 325A. And feel free to subscribe if you enjoy my content overall. But until next time, fellow citizens, I will see you on the flip side.